We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report. Uh, joining me now, Brittany Doris. She's a fifth grade teacher in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Brittany, um, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. So, uh, Brittany, uh, give me a sense. Uh, you guys are now on the fifth day of the strike. Uh, we were both just uh, trying to, to figure <laughs> out. Um, what? Yeah. Uh, um, how many people are striking? Um, of our, our union membership is 4,500 people and that's the teachers. Um, and then we're also being joined by hundreds of community members, families, the kids are coming out and joining us on the line. It's, it's a big deal. It feels massive. And what's, uh, what are the big, uh, bones of contention here? Um, the big ones that we're struggling to bargain over are things like safe classrooms, free of rodents and mold. Um, shocking. We are fighting for smaller class sizes. I currently have a class of 34 fifth graders wow. um, and we are wow. struggling. Um, we're fighting for pay compensation that keeps up with inflation. Portland is the 12th most expensive city in the nation and the second most expensive city for new teachers. Um, and we want to we want to keep up with this crazy inflation and be able to live in the city where we teach, which is a novel idea. And um, and we're fighting for support for our students with special needs and disabilities and neurodivergence because um, they are dramatically underserved with a skeletal support staff right now. So we're trying to get more adults to support the kids that we have and the issues that they're dealing with. And so you guys are, are you out of contract now? I mean, the contract is expired and how long has it been yeah. expired for and how long was that contract in effect? Yeah. So we negotiate three-year contracts and this entire academic year, we've been working without a contract. Um, we've been attempting to bargain this new contract for over a year. Our bargaining team has been hard at work and seeing very little movement from district management. Um, so all year we've been working without a contract so far. And what is, uh, what is your, uh, parent, uh, union and which, which union are you affiliated with? Yeah. So I'm a member of Portland Association of Teachers, which is nested under Oregon Education Association, which is nested under the National Education Association, NEA. Okay. Um, and, uh, because I feel like the NEA has gotten a little bit more aggressive in, in the past mm -hmm. couple of years, really since the red state re revolution, uh, rebellion, I should say. Uh, where you had teachers going out there and uh, even the ones who aren't unionized in most instances are uh, going out there and uh, striking and uh, seeing returns on that. Yeah, we've we've been in communication with a lot of other locals around the nation. And this is this is not a moment. It's a movement. We are seeing educators rise up throughout the country, especially after pandemic time, seeing revealing the discrepancies and the inequities and that teachers and educators won't stand for it anymore. Our kids can't wait. And uh, it's hit Oregon. We're, we're out here. Smaller unions around us have been striking recently. Other unions are watching how this goes for us, taking a, a note to see if they're going to be able to strike as well. And some of the other unions in Portland that work within our schools are also entering mediation in their contract bargaining. Um, our PFSP, that's our paraeducators and our custodial staff, our nutrition workers, they are all also nearing the point of strike um, as their bargaining is not happening in good faith either. Um, talk to me about the relationship with the, the parents and the community, because this is always, you know, one of the, the um, uh, we've been tracking these uh, teacher strikes, I think, you know, uh, personally since Chicago and uh, yeah. the Chicago teacher strike in, I think it was 2011, 2012. We've talked about that with Jane McAlevey and it was, one of like it was the i guess the resurgence of um uh a social justice unionism on some respect uh, respect where teachers in particular and i find nurses are also uh, situated this way where their set of issues and you mentioned this it's really like you talk about 35 uh, uh, students in a class in a fifth grade class i have a fifth grader myself the idea of 35 students in one class it's difficult for you but it's it's the kids who pay uh, and it's yeah. ultimately the parents and the families who pay. I mean, when you send your kids to school and they come back and they said, we had a rat in our classroom, 
this is this is an issue for the parents and for the kids and for the community. Um, tell me how the union has gone about to sort of develop and nurture those relationships. Yeah, I feel very blessed here in Portland. We've got an incredibly supportive family community, um, and a lot of our teachers are parents in our district themselves. And um, the union has been in partnership with the local PTAs at all of our schools. We've been um, communicating pretty openly with parents since pandemic times of these are the ways that we're struggling to support your kid. And you don't want to admit where you're falling behind or where you're lacking. And it's not that teachers aren't trying to do an incredible job, but sharing authentically that we do not have enough resources and you are seeing it firsthand for your student. And our parents are are righteously joining our fight for their students and the students are joining. It's so beautiful to listen to the kids on the line with their side. They see it firsthand. The kids are all right in that they see it and they're fighting. The kids are not all right in the gutting of public education for the last two decades. And we are seeing the ramifications of that on the kids, on their mental health, on their academics. Yeah, and, our families are, are with us. And I imagine it's, I mean, hopefully, uh, you guys will prevail in this, but I imagine that will be pretty empowering too for the kids. I mean, it occurs to me like, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, my union is on strike as well, uh, SAG AFTRA, and um, I've debated about taking my, my, my son out of school just to go down to the picket lines, um, but, you know, so that he would get a taste of that. It, it's got to be, I think, also uh, an opportunity for a learning experience even on the lines with the kids. Right. We teach our students to have a voice in what's going on in their community, to be um, active in making change. We teach them to be change makers and they are seeing that firsthand. We are modeling a lesson in real life right now. And they are joining us right now outside this house. Uh, a handful of our students are on our picket line. It's a, a space of joy and righteous rage the you know well-placed rage they are living in those those sardine can classrooms um one of my students is out there with a chant about students are not sardines don't you know what that means and they are feeling it directly and they are modeling it for us we should take a lesson from the youth there was a student-centered march yesterday a rally here in portland and it was just astonishing to see the youth leading the change and the charge and we're just their amplifiers. We, the staff, are just here to put the megaphone to their mouth and let them be heard. And just to be clear, we're talking uh, teachers K through 12, um, the, yeah. uh, all on strike, high schools, junior highs. And and what's being yep. done uh, by the city to provide for students who rely on things like, I mean, are schools closed down or are kids going in? Right. Uh, but yeah, know, so our, so, our so, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I our buildings are, are shut down. There's no way to find and provide enough subs or scab workers to cover this large of a movement. Um, but our, our union and our district are still providing essential services for our students. There are food pickups, very similar to the structures and supports we saw when we had to close schools in 2020 and 2019. Um, so students are able to receive food and and there is some level of instruction being attempted by our para educators um there's some contention about that families uh refusing to accept those services as it is struck work um but yeah students have access to mental health care and and the health centers and food and all kinds of local uh support networks have been providing child care for families that need to maintain a work schedule and the community is really coming together to take care of its own and we are in some ways fortunately kind of good at that now because we all had to figure that out uh, a few years ago and so the parent community seems patient and supportive and i think attempts at scaring the families from district management have been ineffective um, I was going to, uh, I, I mean, uh, you, you may not know the answer to this, but how much did the union prior to this um, begin, to, prior to the strike, begin to create those, that infrastructure or to coordinate that infrastructure to care for uh, kids who needed uh, child care, to care for uh, kids who needed the services, lunch, and uh, perhaps like, you know, 
um, uh, 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 you know, help maybe with, 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 with various sort of like more urgent uh, uh, needs. Um, how much did the union sort of like set that all of those ducks up in a row? Because that's usually one of the first things we'll hear from the city is like the teachers are irresponsibly leaving the kids, mm -hmm. you know, at home or are, you know, making it harder on parents. Uh, how much of the union uh, prepare for that stuff? Right. We get a lot of what about the kids? And we're saying exactly what about the kids? We've been fighting for them this whole time. And I think we've been credited as a union for being well prepared in getting ready to strike. You could see the writing on the wall. You could see that bargaining was making very little progress. They are not bargaining in good faith. And so we've been laying that structure this entire academic year based on support systems that were still lingering after um, after the pandemic. And we have a push for a community school model in our area, really aware that schools are often the hub for families and children to get what they need. And we take that very seriously. And so those structures have been there somewhat all along and are activated um, early when it was clear we are careening towards a strike. Um, how long are you guys willing to uh, stay out on the lines? <laughs> We're willing to be out here as long as it takes. I think they, the district thinks that we will be scared off by the loss of health insurance we got our community has our backs. We are not worried about that. They think we will start to falter if we push towards the Thanksgiving holiday break. We will not falter. We are ready to be out here uh, for a similar duration to you guys, SAG AFTRA. We we whatever it takes to get what we need and what we deserve and what our students deserve. Um, if someone's in Portland, what can they do to help uh, uh, you guys in uh, in this fight? Yeah, we've got a strike support fund um, that is helping with the, some financial contributions, some of those support systems that we mentioned earlier, making sure kids are getting care and families have what they need. Um, so going to pdxteachers.org, finding our strike fund, and our uh, there's a solidarity text chain that you can get in to keep updated. Um, finding the picket lines in your neighborhood. Anywhere there's a school, there's a picket line that starts our morning there. Um, and bringing honks and bringing coffee and bringing love and support, um, hand warmers. We had a delivery of hand warmers today that was very well, uh, received <laughs> and yeah, finding us out here. We have a rally today in Portland that we're hoping to have a lot of presence at, um, over at our union office. We're going to be taking a bridge and showing up at someone's doorstep with a message. <laughs> oh, great. And what time do you guys usually uh, hit the picket lines? Is it, um, uh, it's, is it through the school day or just the, the first half or, or, or what? Yeah, we are doing some kind of union action through the entire school day. Our pickets are at our schools. We start at seven 45 getting ready. We're on the line by eight. Um, and then we usually are starting to tear down right about 10, 15, 10, 30 to go have lunch, restore ourselves. You can tell a little bit we're losing our voices. We've, been working hard. Um, we're prioritizing care. And then we go back out by 11 30, 12 to an afternoon action of some kind, which has been incredibly moving rallies and marches and big Portland wide um, actions. And it's like going to church. Some of these speeches we've had the, the president of UTLA came out in solidarity and spoke to us, the president of NEA. It's, yeah, it's really profound. And Kid March yesterday. Great to hear it. Well, Brittany Doris, uh, fifth grade teacher in Portland, Oregon. Uh, thanks yep. so much for joining us. Uh, good luck. And uh, we'll put a Thank link you. to that strike fund. Thank you so much, Sam. Have a good day. You too.